Good evening, everybody. This is Jeff J. Brown, and still hot and sweltering Shenzhen, China. You walk outside and you melt like a birthday candle, I mean to tell you. All right, this is a short but very informative and I think important article and podcast. It is entitled, Mao Zedong Died This Day in 1976. And it is, of course, dated 2017, the month of September and the ninth day of the month. There's a photograph of an article in the Sun newspaper in the United States talking about Mao's death back in 1976, and the byline says, Mao Zedong's death not only shook China, it shook the whole world, since he was 20th century's most influential world leader. I didn't say the best, since that is very much an opinion, although 98% of the Chinese would say so. But the most influential, the most important in the 1900s, in terms of world history? Case closed. Mao wins hands down. And the article starts, and of course there are gazillion hyperlinks, uh, in this case YouTube, YouTube videos, so you'll try to, try to get to the original article so you can really benefit from it, and then after you listen to it. On September 9, 1976, Mao Zedong died. Born in 1893, he lived for 82 history-changing years. Earlier in the year, Premier Zhou Enlai passed away, then, not long after, General Zhu De, one of the greatest military leaders and minds of the 20th century, also left this earth. Within the time span of a few months, three of New China's towering giants of communist leadership were no more in flesh. To add insult to injury, right before Mao's death came the calamitous Tangshan earthquake, which killed hundreds of thousands. The Chinese people were in a state of shock, and it really did seem like the signs were there that the heavenly mandate was falling apart. But it didn't turn out that way. As explained in factual detail in my last two books, China Rising, Capitalist Roads and Socialist Destinations, and the second one, China is Communist, Damn It, Dawn of the Red Dynasty, Deng Xiaoping's economic and opening up reforms started starting in 1978 were actually a continuation of what Mao had already started and could never have succeeded without the total transformation of new China thanks to the great leadership of the deceased chairman. In national poll after poll, Mao Zedong, 40 years after his death, continues to be an iconic rock star in the eyes of the Chinese people. Many millions of Chinese go to Mao's hometown in Shaoshan, Hunan province every year to pay their respects to the man who fought for and won their freedom from Western tyranny and imperialism. Many millions more solemnly walk past the sarcophagus in his mausoleum on Tiananmen Square in Beijing. Obviously, they know something about the man that Uranglolanders, and that being all the NATO, NATO countries, plus Australia and New Zealand, that all the Uranglolanders cannot see or refuse to do so thanks to 100 years of hysterical, foaming-at-the-mouth, anti-communist propaganda behind the Great Western Firewall. In Urangloland, Mao is portrayed as a dehumanized monster with mossy fangs and blood dripping from his mouth and clawed hands, a vampire and real-life Hannibal Lecter who feasted on the flesh of his poor, helpless people. It's sad, really, to realize that the CIA big lie, mass media, propaganda, steamroller is so devastatingly effective in brainwashing most of the world's people. It's the same thing in Russia. For the third year in a row, Joseph Stalin was polled in country as the best leader in the country's history, and the Western talking heads just can't figure out why. Well, good golly, Miss Molly! Maybe Stalin wasn't the Mao-like monster cartoon caricature that the same psychopathic, mentally deranged Western media makes him out to be. Stalin is even more popular than Russia's current president, Vladimir Putin, who consistently has approval ratings Western leaders can only dream about. 
After all, it's the Chinese who grew up and spent their lives under the governance of Mao Zedong, not Westerners. It's not the clueless citizens of Uranglu land who live with Stalin. It is Russians who can honestly reflect back on what their former leader means to them, past, present, and future. Want to find out about the real Mao, the Great Leap Forward, and the Cultural Revolution? Read my books listed above. Want to find out about the real Stalin and the much ballyhooed Great Purges? Read the books of Dr. Grover Fur to get the straight poop on the man and his times. Do yourself a favor and at least balance a lifetime of, I'm sorry to say, vomit projectile Urangloland schooling and propaganda that twisted my views of the world for too much of my life. Don't wait until you're 60 years old like me to finally pierce the western veil and step outside the matrix into the white light of reality and reason. The orchestrated Urangloland propaganda reminds me of the movie The Exorcist. I think I finally figured out all the allegories. Linda Blair's character, Reagan McNeil, symbolizes Western mainstream media. The Exorcist, Father Marin, played by Max von Sydow, embodies all the communist and socialist countries around the world. The poor priest, Jason Miller, as Father Karras, who gets hit with the... G- gr- the green projectile vomit plays the part of all the brainwashed citizens behind the great western firewall see what I mean and there's a YouTube clip that shows that infamous scene to coin a Russian metaphor westerners truly live in a mythical Potemkin fake news reality thank you Donald Trump for calling bullshit on, on the west fake news propaganda But it's not just Democrats and, quote, liberals, end of quote, whatever the hell that is supposed to mean in America these days. The big lie, fake news, runs across the entire political spectrum because it is all orchestrated and coordinated by the CIA MI6 military complex. As Mr. Trump attests, Operation Mockingbird never went away. It has metastasized and killed the body politic. While the Chinese and Russians venerate their past leaders, and if you know the real story for very concrete reasons, Americans are cannibalizing their own, as they should. George Carlin expressed very well who Uncle Sam's founding fathers really were and what they created. And there's a YouTube link. John Ron Paul, a great satirical writer, has also given America's history America's history, the jaundiced overview it deserves. And there's a couple of links for his articles. So, don't die a brain-dead mainstream media zombie after signing up at the top of this webpage to receive the free China Rising Bulletin. You can show your contempt for the West's owners by putting your social media to good use and posting this page in its main website. Then, spice up your work lunch or water cooler break with a copy of this article to pass around. Who knows? Maybe you can help save the West from itself before it's too late. Sharing is caring, and no one can say you didn't try. That's it. Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio, Sinoland, for another article and podcast. Have a wonderful night.